Happy Monday. Proverbs 4.25 tells us, Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Welcome to another edition of 10 or less with Tom. Today's topic is don't get distracted. And if you are around students, you see the distractions everywhere. Summer is calling. The end of year celebrations are upon us and no one wants to concentrate on the end of the year exams that mean so much in terms of academic success. For three more weeks, we are encouraging our students to look straight ahead and to finish the job at hand before moving into the summer of 2023. And to succeed at what God has called us to do, we must do these two things. Number one, remove distractions. Now this is not easy, as most people now get hundreds of emails, texts, and tweets every single day. But we must do it. So how? By keeping the discipline of practicing our priorities. Don't always accomplish the easy things first, or the hard things first, or the urgent things first. Do first things first. Start with the activities that provide you with the highest return on your investment of time. When we are focused on something that is leading to good results, we're able to keep the distractions minimized. And that's what we're trying to do. As a boy growing up, my brother and I were often told to clean, or for those of you who are from Pittsburgh, more precisely, we were told to red up our rooms before we could go outside to play with our friends. Now my brother, he could clean his room in 15 minutes. But me, it was more like 15 hours. Not because my room was so much messier than his, but because I would get distracted by the things that I would find as I cleaned. I would find a book and I'd start reading. I'd find some papers and I'd go through them. I'd find a game and I'd start playing it. I would totally forget what my goal was. My priority was to get outside with my friends. But because I lost sight of it, I would often spend the whole day cleaning while my brother, who kept the first thing first, got his job done and enjoyed the day with his friends. He was able to remove the distractions. Which leads to number two, protect yourself from distractions. In his book, How Successful People Think, author and leadership expert John Maxwell writes, I need blocks of time to think without interruptions. I've mastered the art of making myself unavailable when necessary and going off to my thinking place so that I can work without interruptions. However, I am always aware of the tension between my need to remain accessible to others as a leader and my need to withdraw from them in order to think. Jesus dealt with that very same thing. In fact, during our youth Bible study yesterday morning, we were talking about this very thing. As we read in Luke chapter 5, verse 16, that Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. His focused time away from the crowds allowed him to be prepared for the crowds that he would minister to. So to know people's needs, Jesus spent time with people. But to meet people's needs, Jesus spent time with God in prayer. And that's a great example for us. Why? Because as a result of what Jesus did, he was always in the right place at the right time with the right people doing the right things. And we need to do that too. Now, if you are naturally withdrawn, then make sure to get out among people more often. And if you're always on the go, then remove yourself periodically so that you can be refreshed and refocused in order to accomplish what God has called you to do. Now let's take another look at Proverbs 4.25 and then add the next two verses. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the paths for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Keep your foot from evil. Or as the message version puts it, look straight ahead 
and fix your eyes on what lies before you. Mark out a straight path for your feet. Stay on the safe path and don't get sidetracked. When I swim, I always have a hard time swimming in a straight line. So I'm very thankful for those lane markers that they put in the pool. They keep me from straying too far off the path and help me to continue going in the direction that I want to go. So what are the lane markers in your life? Recognize them, use them, and thank God for them. I hope you have a great day and a great week, and I look forward to seeing you on Friday with more thoughts from the Word for You Today. I love you. Have a great day.